welcome back to my youtube channel travel tree in today's video i'm going to explain you about minimum cost panning tree algorithm in the subject of design and analysis of algorithms so basically this is an application of uh, greedy algorithms so like in this video i'll explain you what is this minimum cost panning tree and uh, along with an example and we have two further sub applications in this we have the prims algorithm and the kruskal's algorithm i'll explain you all these things in this video okay so let's get started first of all as i said it is an application of greedy algorithm okay assume that we have a graph which is g is equal to set of v comma e here g represents a graph v means vertices okay vertices or vertex of a graph and e means h or edges of a graph okay now from a given graph we have to get a spanning tree and that too we have to get that spanning tree with minimum cost okay so let us first understand what is this spanning tree so let's consider that um, we have a graph and then spanning tree is nothing but it is a subset of that graph which will have the same number of vertices which from the original graph and n minus num one number of edges what is n here n is number of vertices don't get confused from a given original graph you will be getting a subgraph where it will have same number of vertices as the original graph and the number of edges will be one less than the number of vertices for example let us say we have six vertices in the original graph okay in the original graph g you have six vertices then in the spanning tree whatever tree or whatever graph in the spanning tree you will have let us consider that s is a spanning tree you will have same number of vertices same six vertices you will have but number of edges will be six minus one you will have only five edges i'll explain you that with an example also don't worry okay and one more thing which you have to remember is you cannot get a spanning tree for non-connected graphs so what do you mean by non-connected graph see this these are non-connected graph this is one separate graph this is the other separate graph you can get spanning trees for this individual unit and you can also get spanning trees for this individual unit okay but for both together you cannot get a spanning tree because there is no connection between these two graphs okay got it so if the two graphs are not connected then you cannot get a spanning tree for those two graphs okay so this is about the concept so as i told you have two applications in this you can this solve this either by using the prims algorithm or you can solve it by kruskal's algorithm okay so let us first understand what exactly is spanning tree then let us do uh, how we can get spanning trees with the help of the uh, greedy method okay so in general if you are given a graph like this then how do you find spanning trees for this graph so what you have to do is first what is uh, the thing in spanning tree you will have number of vertices will be the same so vertices are same but edges will be one min i mean number of vertices minus one right so here for this graph let us see what you will get first possibility is one two three Four. number of edges uh, number of vertices should be same no change in that but number of edges should be one less right so let us uh, try to get it so how many vertices you have here four four vertices you have that means how many edges you should have you should have three edges in the spanning tree so let us take this as one possibility okay so what are the costs five three six so what is the total cost 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 6 is 14. 14 is the cost for this. What is the another alternative for this? Same. 1, 2, 3, 4. But uh, you, can, you should have 3 edges, right? You can do like this. You can connect them like this. So what will be the cost? 4, 6, 3. So what will be the cost? 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 plus um, 3 is 13. Okay. And you will have another alternative also. What is that alternative? same one two three four so um, another alternative could be like um we can do like this right so what will be the uh, cost here four two three four plus two is how much 
6 6 plus 3 is how much 9 so 9 is the cost in this case so among these three spanning trees which spanning tree is having the least cost 9 so this is the minimum cost of spanning tree for this given graph so since here we have only four vertices and we have only few vertices and few edges you are able to list out the spanning trees actually there are more possible spanning trees for this right you will get even like two or three more spanning trees but just for example purpose i have listed only three so for this small uh, graph itself you are getting around six to seven spanning trees then what about you have a graph with let's say seven edges or seven vertices eight vertices ten vertices in that case listing all the possible spanning trees and getting the minimum cost from them is a very 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 lengthy process right so that is why we have this prims algorithm and kruskal's algorithm so let us see how these algorithms will work okay uh, so this is the example that we are going to take this is the example graph that we are going to take so let us apply both prims algorithm and kruskal's algorithm on this graph and let us see what is the minimum cost spanning tree that you are going to get okay so in the prims approach what you have to do is first you have to select the minimum cost edge okay so what is the minimum cost edge in this entire graph 10 whatever min cost you are seeing in the, among all those cost 10 is the minimum cost what is the edge there 1 to 6 so first select this 1 to 6 edge okay the cost is 10 next okay one thing so since it is a spanning tree how many vertices it should have it should have same number of vertices right that means how many it should have seven vertices and how many edges it should have seven minus one it should have six edges okay so yeah now see after selecting the edge with minimum cost next what you have to do is whatever is the next minimum cost that one you have to select but it has to be connected to the previously selected edges that means so what is the next minimum cost this one after 10 what is the next minimum cost the 12 but is 12 i mean the 3 to 4 edge is it anyway connected to the already selected one already selected one is the 1 to 6 is it anyway connected to either 1 or 6 no so you can you cannot take this one right now okay next see what is the next minimum one after 12 the next minimum one is 14 again 14 is also like 2 to 7 this is also like in no way connected to the like this uh what is that 2 to 7 is also no way connected to 1 or 6 okay i mean 1 or 6 in the sense it has to be an immediate connection like from 1 it has to be connection but it is not like that right from 1 you have to come to 2 then 2 to 7 like that it should not be like that from 1 or from 6 it should be a direct connection so what you have what you can do is just check 1 and 6 what are the edges which are attached to 1 and 6 25 and 28 among 25 and 28 which is smaller 25 so you can take 25 okay so 25 and what is here 5 now see from 1 6 5 what edges are going from 1 6 and 5 what edges are going among all those which is minimum okay so from 1 you have 10 and 28 10 is already selected 28 is there from 6 nothing else is there 10 and 25 both are done from 5 you have 24 and 22 among 28 24 22 which is smaller 22 so you will be selecting the 22 edge now okay next from 1 6 5 4 what are the minimum edges you have to see from 1 still it is 28 from 5 22 is already selected so 24 is remaining and from 4 you have 18 and you have 12 so from uh, among all these connections which is smaller this 12 is smaller so you will go this way 3 12 okay now from 1 6 5 4 3 which is the next smallest one you have to check from 1 you still have this 28 from 5 you still have the 24 from 4 you have 18 and from 3 you have 16 so among all these which is smaller 16 so you will select 16 okay next from 2 
you have 14 and from 3 already done from 4 you have 18 and from 5 you have 24 which is smaller among all these things 14 is smaller so you will come this way 14 just see if all the vertices are covered or not 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 all the vertices are covered well and good see if you have six edges or not one two three four five six yes you have six edges that means your spanning tree is completed so now whatever cost you get that is the cost of your spanning tree 10 plus 25 plus 22 plus 12 plus 16 plus 14 so how much you will get you will get 99 99 is the cost so 99 is the minimum possible cost that you can get for the spanning tree which is generated out of this original graph okay now if you are doing the same thing for the Kruskal's algorithm then let us see what is the minimum cost that you will be getting okay so let us see what is the approach that you have to follow for the Kruskal's algorithm so you guys are clear with Prince algorithm right you have to initially in the first step you have to select the algorithm which is having the minimum cost among all the given edges and from that point onwards you should keep checking for connections wherever you find connections and among those connections whichever are the smaller edges you have to pick them okay this is prims now let us see how Kruskal's approach approach is designed in Kruskal's algorithm you always have to select the edge which is having the minimum cost. You don't have to worry about the connection. So the only difference between Prince and Kruskal's is initially, initially in both of them you will be starting with the minimum cost edge itself. But in Prince for the next steps onwards you should look for connections. In Kruskal's you need not look for any connections. Okay that means how it works. Let's see. So first uh, what is the minimum cost one here? same 1 to 6 so first you will be selecting 1 to 6 by default okay the cost is 10 i think now you guys can see it better so next what you have to do is check for the next minimum cost edge you don't have to worry about the connection okay so what is the next minimum cost 12 so where is 12 here 3 to 4 so there is no connection but you don't have to worry about the connection because this is Kruskal's algorithm okay what is the next minimum cost edge this one 2 to 7 okay so 2 to 7 what is the cost 14 okay now what is the next minimum cost edge 16 this one right so 16 is here what is the next minimum cost edge 18 but you can't um, include 18 because if you include 18 it will form a cycle which is not allowed in the spanning trees you should not form a cycle so you cannot take this 18 so after 18 what is the next minimum cost this one 5 to 4 which is 22 you can take that because it is not forming any cycle okay done Next, what is the next minimum cost? 24. 24 again, if you if you take 24, it is forming a cycle again. So, you can't take 24 also. After 24, what is the next minimum cost? 6 to 5, which is 25. Okay. Now, check if you got all the vertices or not. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, you got 7 vertices. And how many edges you should get? 6 edges. Let's see if you got it or not. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, you got 6 edges. Okay. How many edges are there in the original graph? That doesn't matter to you. Only how many vertices are there in the original graph? That matters. And that number minus 1 number of edges should be there. So, this is the spanning tree that you got using the Kruskal's algorithm. Let us see what is the minimum cost now. 10 plus 25 plus 22 plus 12 plus 16 plus 14 30 42 52 62 64 74 84 94, 99 yeah so 99 is the minimum cost for this spanning tree so for in both Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm sorry in both Prim's and Kruskal's you got the minimum cost as 99 so it doesn't matter which algorithm you are taking in this case okay so this is about minimum cost spanning tree. 
so i hope this video is clear to you in the next video let's meet up with the uh, single source uh, shortest path problem so yeah that's all about this video guys thanks for watching the video till the end if you still have any questions feel free to let me know in the comment section thank you so much